cast for Kentucky looks good. Ponderosa tomorrow night. Junction City, Kentucky tomorrow night. And in Florence Speedway, home of the Sunoco North South 100. The Roth Latham Memorial on Saturday night. Can't wait. 50 laps coming up. Here's your starting lineup. On the terminal maintenance and construction pole, it'll be the number one car. He's the number one ranked dirt late model driver in the nation. That is Hudson O'Neill out of Martinsville, Indiana. Last year, he ended the season as the number one ranked dirt late model driver in the country. Back in the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series this year, the 49 out of Blairsville, Georgia. That is Jonathan Davenport. Row two, he owns 40 career wins. He's a four-time series champion. One of the two we have out of Jacksonville, Florida. That'll be Earl Pearson, Jr. And on the outside, the driver currently third of the points. He is out of Evans, Georgia, the 76 of Brandon Overton. Row three. Looking for his first career win in the Lucas Oil Series, the 28 out of Carpentersville, Il, excuse me, out of Parkersburg, West Virginia. It's Tyler Carpenter, Tyler Carpenter at 28. On the outside, the 20 RT, the current Lucas Oil late monitor series points leader out of Martinsville, Indiana, Ricky Thornton Jr. Row four, the 99 C, looking for his first win in the series. He's out of Winfield, Tennessee. It's Cameron Marler and older brother Mike Marler alongside the 157, also out of Winfield, Tennessee. Row five, he'll be looking for his third straight win in the Roth Latham Memorial. He'll be with us at Ponderosa tomorrow night out of Verona, Kentucky. That is Josh Rice and the number 20 back in the rocket here this weekend. He's out of Newport, Tennessee. Four-time series champion, the second all-time winning his drive with 80 wins. That is Jimmy Owens, row six. Rookie late model driver, modified hot shoe. Out of Batavia, Ohio, in the Stricker Street 68 Masters Build House car, it's Adam Stricker. And on the outside of this return to the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, the 99B out of Bear Lake, Pennsylvania, that is Rick Boom Briggs. Row seven will be the 16. And he comes to us out of Decorah, Iowa. That is Tyler Bruning on the outside. He just won the All Star Circuit of Champion feature. He will start 14th in the late model. It'll be Kyle Larson out of Elk Grove, California, the Rumley 6. Row 8 will be Todd Brennan, the 2021 track champion here. He's out of Zanesville, Ohio. On the outside, the defending Dirt Track World Champion winner out of Eaton, Georgia, that is Garrett Smith. Row 9 will be the number one car. That is Tyler Irby. He's out in New Waverly, Texas. And on the outside, the two-time and reigning series champion, the 39 out of Watertown, New York. That is Tim McCready. Row 10. In his first start here at Atomic, the 83 out of Johnson City, Tennessee is Jensen Ford. And the 18, the out of Fayetteville, North Carolina, Dalton Wilson. Row 11, last year's O'Reilly out of Parts Rookie of the Year. That is Garrett Alberson. He's out of Dubuque, Iowa. On the outside, the 111B out of Centerville, Pennsylvania, Max Blair. 12th row, provisionals tonight. The 99 out of Dresden, Ohio, Devin Moran. And the 11 of Spencer Hughes. And your Christy provisionals tonight, Ross Robinson and Logan Robertson and your defending track champion, Rod Conley in 71R. Bruce Hines, I'm gonna put you on my headset. We lost George Branscombe this week. We're gonna have a missing man formation. I'll tell a little bit about the fans here. They know him, he's from Chillicothe. Third in the first World 100 behind Bruce Gould and Joe Rutman. Tell us a little bit about George Branscombe. Once again, thank you, James. We're going to run a missing man formation in the night four wide. The night three. George Branscombe, two time late model track champion back in the 70s. Multiple times. Feature winner not only here, but the old Zanesville Speedway back at Skyline. Him and Bob Lee Master, what a duo they were back in the day, not just here at Atomic. He is also a member of the KC Atomic Speedway Hall of Fame. Let's see you get on your feet, race fans. Get up, wave your hats, wave your hankies, hand to my Uncle Joe, let him know here at Atomic Speedway. You appreciate the show that the Lucas Oil Late Model Series is getting ready to happen right here for you. Of course, George and Bob also very much active in late model racing throughout the years, but George Branscom lost him this week. In fact, we had the honor of doing his service here later or actually the first part of next week, and family still very much active for the dirt racing fans. And so again tonight, George, this show is for you and your family. And again, we thank the family very much as we salute them here this evening. Thank you, Blake and Bruce. Thank you guys, great show. Let's do it again next year. There we are, we're gonna do it one more time. The late George Branscombe passed away again as Bruce mentioned, track champion here twice. 
What was it, 71 and 72? And again, third in the very first World 100 at Eldora Speedway in 1971. Hudson O'Neill in pivotal race here. All three nights this weekend. We've been off for 84 days. February the 10th at East Bay. Who ended up in victory lane that night? The number one car on the pole, Hudson O'Neill. He won the last two at East Bay. Jonathan Davenport on the outside in his return to the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. He has one win this year, 66 in his career for the three-time champion, trying to join Earl Pearson Jr. and Jimmy Owens is a four-time champion. Earl Pearson Jr., 40 career wins. His last one was at Port Royal last August, and Brandon Overton, third in the points. Plans to run through at least to show me 100. We'll take it from there. Be willing to bet he runs it because he's so good at Eldora. That's where the season title will be decided. And that will be in October, the Dirt Track World Championship, 100,000 to win. And then you have Tyler Carpenter, two-time Gateway Dirt Nationals winner in car number 28. We're covering our heartbeat hot sauce pit tonight. He'll interview the top three after this one's over. Dustin Jarrett, what a night has been. We need to bring the star, the, the night the stars come out back again in 2024. Let's let's do it, man. Yeah, let's do it. You know, I was I was here back at the old night the stars come out when it was the All Star Circuit of Champions Sprint Cars in the Stars Late Models. So, man, this kind of brings me back to I don't want to date myself, but it, it brings me back a few years. James, we'll say that. So cool to see this great crowd, man, almost circling the entire racetrack, or at least from the middle of turns three and four all the way down into turns one and two. So many people crawling in the pit area. We just saw a dynamite. Uh, wing sprint car feature with the Tesla's All-Star Circuit of Champions. We saw the bottom lane starting to come in a little bit, and I think that we are going to see a dandy 50 lap late model A main right here. Yeah, thank you very much, Dustin. He'll interview the top three here in Lucas Oil Victory Lane. And the missing man formation. Everybody stand in honor of the late George Branscombe, two-time track champion here at Atomic Speedway. Again, third of the first World 100. We lost him this week. Funerals on Monday from Chillicothe, Ohio. All right. For the first time since February the 10th, we'll start the Racing for Hero Start Zone. 50 laps tonight. Hudson only won this race two years ago. Jimmy Owens is the defending race winner. Winning in 2022. Owens has won it twice. 50 laps. It'll be Delaware double file restarts till five or less laps to go in the race. Let's see, we can go all 50 laps. Caution for your great sprint car feature. Won by Kyle Larson. We're gonna start in turn four with Hudson O'Neill and Jonathan Davenport. This is the Dixie Chopper. Feel the thunder with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Oh, baby, they are going at it like it's the 50th lap of this race. And O'Neill will slide it in. That turn four, still a little treacherous at the line. Half a car length, Davenport out in front. Two laps in the book. O'Neill second, Overton third. Thornton runs in fourth. The current points leader sporting the Midwest Sheep and the Loin Spoiler. O'Neill got to the bottom of the infield, almost got that right rear up against the wall. Davenport remains out in front. And it's O'Neill, Overton, Thornton, Pearson. Mike Marler runs in sixth as they head down the back straight away. Brandon over to now. Will he make a run for that 200,000? Hey, do it. He's never done it in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. And right now he battles with Hudson O'Neill down the back straight away. They are second and third in the points. They work lap number five. Jonathan Davenport. O'Neill led the first lap. Davenport has led since, and then O'Neill, Overton, Thornton, Marler, fifth. And it's Pearson, Carpenter, Rice, Marler, Owens runs in tenth. The 
Cooper right now down the main straightaway. Cornet Power under the hood of the 49 car. The Longhorn chassis for Lance and Darla Landers. You see the Rocket One Valvoline House car of Hudson O'Neill. And you see the 76, the Wells and Sons Motorsports Longhorn. Battle right here for second. Seven laps in the books tonight. Still 43 remaining here in the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series. Main event. Eight different winners so far here in 2023. O'Neill tiptoeing around the top. Here comes over to down low. They go side by side out of turn four. At the line, who's it going to be? And over to goes to second. Brandon over to slips by for second. In car 76 down the back straight with eight scored. Newborn Jr. remains in the fourth spot as they still go out at side by side at the line. Half a car length over to still has the spot. They battle into turn one. Now they have the 49 in their sights. Eight tenths of a second. And right now, Davenport's going to pick up some heavy traffic here very, very shortly. Out at turn four down the main straightaway. Green so far with 10 complete. Mike Marler and Ricky Thornton Jr. battling it out. Marler, the winner at Eldora a couple of weeks ago in the Castro Flow Racing Night in America. Ricky Thornton Jr. coming off a hunt the front win down at All Tech as they battle out at turn four. Hudson O'Neill on their sights down the main straightaway. 11 complete. Davenport, Overton, O'Neill, Marler, Thornton, Rice is sixth, seventh is Pearson, eighth is Cameron Marler, ninth is Larson, Larson started 14th, Tyler Carpenter runs in 10th. Whoa, and Ricky Thorne Jr. sideways in turn four. So the Gorsuch performance, first caution in this main event, 11 complete. And you see those two there, the 157 and the 20 RT. Jonathan Davenport, he took the lead on lap two. And Dustin, I couldn't see, I just saw the end of it when Thornton was spinning down there. But 11 laps in the books. Could you see anything from your vantage point, Dustin? I did not, James. I actually looked up, and the 20RT was already sideways. You may have seen what I saw, though. You may have saw him pull up alongside the 157 of Mike Marler. And again, I, I don't know if, if he pulled up there for a reason or if he was just maybe thinking something happened or was checking something on his car or checking with a crew member or what. But I looked up, and as a matter of fact, I have got a heartbeat hot sauce flag directly in front of me that blocked my view of seeing what happened to the current Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series point leader James all right 11 laps in the books it'll be Jonathan Davenport Brandon Overton second and Hudson O'Neill is third so Overton have the pick of position then Mar Mike Marler Josh Rice Earl Pearson Jr. Cameron Marler Kyle Larson will now be eighth Tyler Carpenter ninth Jimmy Owens runs in 10th in 20. All right, 11 laps in the books, 39 to go. Get O'Neill credited with leading the first lap. Davenport has led since. Brandon Overton running in third.
Right now the Todd Steel Building's hard charger, Tyler Ebb right now. And he won his heat race. That aligns with the droop. All right, Overton. Brandon's going to pick the bottom on O'Neill, so they'll double him up behind your leader here at the Delaware Double File Restart with 11 laps complete. Josh Rice, by the way, started ninth. He's now fifth in that 11. Cameron Marler, one of his best runs in the Lucas Oil 100 Series, that white and blue 99. So it's Davenport, Overton, O'Neill, Mike Marler, Rice, your top five. Sixth is Pearson, seventh is Cameron Marler, eighth is Kyle Larson, ninth Tyler Carpenter, then 11th, or the 10th rather, is Jimmy Owens. Boone Briggs trying to get back into a top 10 finishing spot here. And then rookie late model driver Adam Stricker and Tyler, 11 down at the Racing for Heroes restart zone in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. 11 down, 30 to nine, 39 to go in the Buckeye Spring 50 here at Atomic Speedway. The outside here comes Overton O'Neill's got to go through the middle down the back straightaway into turn three Davenport will lead him O'Neill will throw the slider and Overton can he make it stick that turn four he bumps the cushion he'll go back to second at center deal and one Overton back to third Marler down the back straightaway Mikey Marler in that Delco equipment car number 157 here comes Rice at 11 13 in the books The back straight away. The Wells and Sons Motorsports. 76 of Brandon Overton. Two wins this year to Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series. Mike Marler, first time with the series. Remember, he did not run Speed Weeks back in January and February as they come out at turn number two down the back straight away. He did run the Wild West shootout as they come out of 415 of the books. It's David Porton, O'Neill, Overton, Marler, Rice, Pearson, Cameron Marler, seven, Larson, eight. Tyler Carpenter ninth and Tyler Herb. Tyler Herb up to 10th in car number one after starting 17th. So Tyler Herb on the move in that car number one. And we are not even halfway. In fact, we're 14 laps away. We'll have this 50 lap main event. We're nine laps away from halfway. There's Overton. Glide got a turn for Davenport leads by seven tenths of a second that last time around. And this time around, it will be three tenths of a second. It's now they go into turn number three. Hudson O'Neill making up time. Here comes the battle for the lead out of turn four. Oh, O'Neill got sideways, almost got into the concrete. Flirt with disaster in turn four. It's back to six tenths of a second for Davenport down the back straightaway. O'Neill, Overton, Marler, Cameron, Marler, Josh Rice, Tyler, but up another spot to ninth. Herb is wheeling the best performance car down the main straightaway. In at turn number one, 19 laps complete. Six shy of the halfway mark. Jimmy Owens won this race a year ago. Hudson O'Neill won it on the Double Down Motorsports team in 2021 as they come out of turn four. Mikey Marler sizing up the 76 of Overton at a one. 20 in the books, five shy of the halfway mark as they will battle heavy, and I mean heavy, lap traffic in a turn three. Now it'll be O'Neill, Overton, and Mike Marler. Can they make up time? How about Cameron Marler? Best run ever in the Lucas Oil Late Motor Dirt Series. And that Danny McLaughlin, number 99, out of Somerset, Kentucky, who owns that car. Danny McLaughlin, the veteran car owner and driver. Right now, heavy traffic for your leader in Davenport. The cushion about bit him in the one as they get around Logan Robertson. O'Neill slices to the inside. They go side by side into turn two. And Davenport will maintain the lead. They work lap 23. O'Neill on the bottom. O'Neill led the first lap. Can he regain the lead at the line? It's at the car link. Davenport by one tenth of a second out in front. 23 scored. It's Davenport, O'Neill, Overton, Mike Marler, younger brother Cameron running in fifth. Then it's Rice, Pearson, Larson, Tyler, Tyler Carpenter. The top 10 heavy traffic goes into turn one. O'Neill will shoot to the inside to 
trying to get around Garrett Albers. No, I don't need. And Davenport trying to get around Moran. Here comes O'Neill on the bottom. Oh, Slurting in there. That was close. As they come down the main straight away, here comes over to the 76. He's there. A three way dance for the lead out at turn number two. Davenport, Hudson, O'Neill, and Brandon Overton. Here they come out of turn four. Here comes Mikey Marler, the 157. We're one past the halfway mark, 26 complete in the turn one. Devin Moran, the last corner lead lap. O'Neill goes to the outside, tries the crossover into three. Now it goes back to the top. Can he retake the lead down the main straightaway at the line? He does. Hudson O'Neill back in front of Atomic with 27 scored. Into the turn number three. Now working around Devin Moran. Devin Moran at one of his best tracks, and it has been a struggle here tonight. Right now, he runs back in 22nd place. By the way, Max Blair is up to 10th in the 111. Max Blair, a contender for the rookie of the year, right now started in 22nd in that Brick Transport car. What about if a lead out of turn four? Hudson O'Neill, John of the Davenport, Brandon Overton, and Mike Marler into one. We'll have 20 to go next time around as they work lap 30 down the back straight away here around this 3 8 mile oval. Atomic Speedway, Chillicothe, Ohio, as they come out of turn four. Down the main straightaway, it's still O'Neill out in front with 20 to go. Took the lead, he led lap one, regained the top spot in lap 27. Davenport around the defending dirt track world champion and O'Reilly on a parts rookie of the year contender Garrett Smith out of turn four. Straightaway 31 in the books. O'Neill, Davenport, Overton, Mike Marler, Cameron Marler. Sixth is Larson, seventh is Rice, eighth is Tyler, ninth is Max Blair up another spot. An early contender for the Todd Steel Buildings. Hard charger. Are he's going to be either Tyler Herb or Max Blair? Max Blair started 22nd up to ninth. Tyler Herb started back in eight, uh, yes, 18th. He's up to position number eight. Battle here. That is for. Second, third, and fourth behind your leader. Overton will work the bottom. Those two drivers have dominated Eldor, the dream of the world, the last few years. Brandon Overton and Jonathan Davenport. As they come out at turn number four, it's still Hudson O'Neill showing the way in car number one, the Rocket House car. Andy Durham power plant under the hood as Overton has taken the second spot down the back straight away. Here comes Marler working on Davenport as we go to the double box out of turn four. The main straightaway, Hudson O'Neill. The end of Speed Weeks, he won the last two at East Bay. He won at Volusia, heading into turn number three. Ran well at Bulls Gap, a top three there as he comes out of turn four. Meanwhile, Marler all over Davenport as we work. Lap 36. Kyle Larson up to fifth, started 14th. Tyler Herb up to seventh. Max Blair up to eighth. We still have 14 laps to go. Those two car, those three cars there may be the fastest on the track. Hudson O'Neill right now stretching it out 1.8 seconds. As you see the battle here, Marler slotted into two around Davenport. J.D. will battle back down the back straight away to go side to side into turn number three. Jonathan Davenport, Mike Marler. Marler will take the spot into turn one. 38 complete. It's O'Neill, Overton, Mike Marler. Larson, fifth, Cameron Marler, sixth, Tyler, seventh, Max Blair, eighth, Josh Rice, ninth, Earl Pearson, Jr., tenth, Tim McCready runs at 11. Here you see the 157. He won here at Eldora Speedway. We're in the state of Ohio, of course, at Eldora Speedway. A few weeks ago, the Castro Flow Racing, not in America. Larson on the move around Jonathan Davenport at a turn four. Right now, 10 laps to go. Here comes Larson. Coming off that win of the All-Star Circuit of Champions, and he's going to go to the outside and around Davenport. Kyle Larson from 14th to 4th. Down the main straightaway. He's got it humming up top. But right now, he is going to have to make up some time quickly. He's about 3 seconds, 3.6 behind your leader, Hudson O'Neill. Overton still second. Mike Marler third. Larson fourth. Davenport fifth. Cameron Marler, tip of the cap to him in the sixth. Max Blair has climbed to seventh. He's gotten around Tyler Herb. And the 111 and the 1T battle out. Here's traffic here for your leader. Got to be careful. 
Down the next straightaway. Boom Briggs comes up in front of your leader in a turn. 143 scored. Seven to go for O'Neill. Close call there. Max Blair has got it going on, and he's not done yet. He works on Marler. Here comes Tyler back on the outside. Tyler will make a run on Marler. He'll take him. He'll take Garrett Smith, who's a lap down. Long green flag stretch and racing. They almost ran out of real estate on the main straightaway. Five to go coming up next time around. Tyler has got a good hot rod down the back straightaway. 14 to 6. Blair again, 22nd. And the 111 to 8. Tyler going to be hoping for a caution as we have five to go. Here comes Brandon, o Brandon over to now reeling in your leader, Hudson O'Neill down the main straightaway. In at turn one. Both looking for their third Lucas Oil Late Monitored Series victory of 2023. After an 84-day layoff, they'll have three to go. O'Neill and Overton. Out at turn number four. Down the main straightaway. It is not over yet. Overton goes to the outside and Neil on the bottom. He'll slide up the track in front of Dalton Wilson. Down the back straightaway. He'll lose his momentum. Here comes Overton. They'll have two to go. Into turn three. Oh, baby. Hang on, please stay green. We're gonna have a great finish at the line. O'Neill still leads. One car link, two to go. White flag coming up. We've seen this before here at Atomic. In the Lucas Oil Late Model Series, I believe one of them involved Daryl Anigan years ago. As they come down the bottom, over to out of turn number four. Down the main straightaway, white flag, one to go. Final lap, Overton. Right there through the middle. O'Neill down the back straightaway. O'Neill trying to win this race two out of the last three years. In traffic behind Tyler Brody. O'Neill trying to protect that turf. He'll slide up the track out at turn four. And the number one ranked dirt late mother driver of the nation stays number one as he wins here tonight at Atomic. Brandon Overton crosses the line in second. Mikey Marler at third. Kyle Larson will get fourth. Fifth will be Jonathan Davenport. Sixth from 14th is Tyler Erb. Cameron Marler, seventh. Great run for him. Best career run in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Uh, Max Blair, 22nd to 8th in the 111. Josh Rice will finish in ninth, and 10th will be Tim McCready. And Ricky Thornton, Jr., tip of the captain, came back from the tail to finish in 11th. Again, all unofficial. The top five will go to the scales. 11th again, Thornton, 12th, Pierce, 13th, Jensen, 4th, 14th, Carpenter, 15th, Owen, 16th, Bruning, 17th, Dalton Wilson, 18th, Spencer Hughes, 19th, Ross Robinson, 20th, Boone Briggs, 21st, Garrett Smith, 22nd, Devin Moran, 23rd, Garrett Alberson, Rod Conley, and then they all finished the race. Uh, several of those one lap down from Dalton Wilson on to Rod Conley, Logan Robertson, will finish 25th, Adam Stricker 26th here tonight. How about it, late model fans? Good race, good finish there. And we will talk to the podium finishers here in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series. Hey, thanks for joining us here tonight. You see the Brandon Ford Pace Truck down here again will be tomorrow night, Ponderosa Speedway, Junction City, Kentucky, live here on MAV TV on Flow Racing. Saturday night, from Florence Speedway in Union, Kentucky, the Ralph Latham Memorial, 15,000 to win on Saturday night. That is much better, I can see now. I got, that's why I bring my own light, Bruce. So Hudson O'Neill, the deficit, three tenths of a second at the finish over Brandon Overton. Max Blair, your Todd Steel Buildings hard charger. How about that? On the day the announces, he's going to run full time in the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series this year, not only for the championship, for the rookie of the year, 22nd. Up to eighth. Tyler, if not for that droop infraction early on when he won his heat race, where he would have started third, he started 14th. Excuse me, he started 17th and finished in sixth. So again, unofficially your top five, Hudson O'Neill, Brandon Overton, Mike Marler, Kyle Larson, Jonathan Davenport, sixth Tyler, seventh great run, best career finish in the series for Cameron Marler, Max Blair eighth, Josh Rice ninth, and the two-time and defending series champion, Tim McCready, comes home in 10th. 
So again, your Todd Steel Building's hard charger, the 111 of Max Blair. So the top 16 all ran 50 laps. And in one lap down, Wilson, Hughes, Robinson, Briggs, Smith, Moran, Alberson, and Conley. Three cars did not finish again. Robertson and Stricker and Todd Brennan, the 2021 track champion here at Atomic. Again, we'll be live next Friday night as well. Farmer City Raceway, Farmer City, Illinois, Fairbury Speedway, Fairbury, Illinois, next Saturday night. And he clears the scales in the droop. And the number one ranked dirt late model driver in the nation, 22 years old. As he comes out at turn four, the Rocket One house car, Valvoline, Durham powered, Swibert calf ranches. Out of Martinsville, Indiana, ladies and gentlemen, how about it for Hudson O'Neill, your winner here tonight at Atomic. DJ, down to you. That was a heck of a good finish there. Yes, it was, and he did what he needed to do to hang on as he's going to pull, as you'd mentioned, James, that rocket chassis, Valvoline, Swaybert, Calf Ranches, number one here into the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series victory lane, a winner with the series for the third time this season. Three straight wins coming almost three months apart from each other as he gets ready to climb out of that race car. A winner with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series here tonight at Atomic Speedway. Jeremy Shields down there making sure that he's got everything ready. Crew down here checking out the tires as well. Congratulating Hudson O'Neill, Austin Hargrove down there giving him a congratulations. He's about to climb out of the car, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight's winner with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series and the night the stars come out out of Martinsville, Indiana, Hudson O'Neill. <laughs> The pyro going off in the background. And Dustin, he will be the new points leader headed to Ponderosa tomorrow night. He'll be sporting the Midwest Sheet Middle points leader in Kentucky tomorrow night. Going to go over and give Tessa a big hug. And I think he's going to be, he's going to be even more excited whenever he hears that, James. Hud, congratulations, man. You have won three straight Lucas Oil races. It just comes three months apart from each other. How does it feel to be back in victory lane with the series? Oh, man, what a what a race, man. That, uh, that cushion was really treacherous, and I made a bunch of mistakes on it, but it was just so big and pound up or, you know, built up on the wall. It was real forgiving, and you could make a little mistake and it not hurt you. But to be able to come back after a long break, uh, you know, we, we've had speed, and that break was killing us sitting around. We were ready to get going, and, uh, man, I just can't thank all my guys, Mark, Danny, Joel, Austin, Cody, my girlfriends here with me, and oh, the whole Rocket Chassis organization back at the shop. They work their butts off every day so we get to be able to come out here and do this and drive awesome race cars. So really appreciate all them. Steve Baker back at the shop, and we'll uh, see if we can't carry speed over for the rest of the week. You talk about coming back to victory lane with the Lucas Oil Series. You came back in that race as well. You and Jonathan battled there for the first few laps of that race. He got out front, but you never relinquished, it seemed like. You kind of you never really let him out of your crosshair, so to speak. Yeah, you know, I, uh, if it don't show you how important it was for us to get the lead on that first lap, just watch me and Jonathan race in first two laps. We were sly. I'm telling you, we were driving our butts off. And uh, that's fun whenever you get to race like that. And... And really, I, I had a good race car from the beginning. I think I was just, uh, I was a little too forgiving at the beginning and just kind of got into a little bit of a pace, a little bit slower than really I probably need to be setting. And, and my guys gave me a little pump up right there before, uh, before we went back green and told me to get up on the wheel. So uh, I knew that we could go. Uh, you know, they, these guys prepare a great race car for me. And, and uh, you know, they build an awesome piece to where you can get up there and bang off the cushion like that for some laps and then nothing happens. So. Thank you to them. Thank you to all these great sponsors on this thing. Valvoline, uh, Sorber Calf Ranches, O'Neill Savage and Recycling, WR1 Sim Chassis, Ace Metal Works, Gunners Honey, uh, Performance Grading, Snowco Race Fuel, Rocket Pre-Owned, uh, Andy Durham Race Engines are in fall us tonight up around that cushion. And 
uh, Integra Racing Shocks, uh, Kaiser Manufacturing. Um, you know, it's just a, it's a great feeling to come back and, and have, have good speed outside of Florida. And, uh, you know, we've had good speed at the couple races we've ran before here. And we just, you just got to stay on top of these balls because once they get to rolling your way, they, they, they're going to quit at some point. You just got to, uh, you just got to ride them while you're high. So, uh. I'm blessed to be here, blessed to be able to do this and perform in front of all you great fans. And uh, it's a blessing to get here to come and drive race cars for a living. You're unofficially going to go into Ponderosa tomorrow with the orange Midwest sheet metal uh, spoiler. You are the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series points leader unofficially. How's that sound? That's unbelievable. Uh, two years ago here, I took the points lead here, and I, I didn't hold on to it for very long. I We went up to... up out east and struggled a little bit and gave it right back to him. So we'll, uh, we'll see if we can't hold on to this one a little bit longer, Dustin. How about another round of applause for the New Deal, Hudson O'Neill. We'll come over and grab a word with your second and third place finishers. Finishing in the runner-up spots. Runner-ups, you were almost like half half out front in that one. Brandon Overton, man. Wait, talk to Hudson O'Neill about not giving up when Davenport came out front. You were the same way, man. I mean, you, you hung out there. You never gave up. But you seemed like you found a line that was really comfortable to you. And that's when you really started making progress towards the front. Yeah, I just knew, like, I wasn't going to pass him around the same line. So we just kind of run through the middle there, did our thing. And, uh, yeah, we had a good run. We, uh, we almost got him. You know, we needed... The traffic was slowing them down a little bit. I, I, I could make a little time down here in the middle of three and four. So uh, yeah, we'll take it, man. We had a we just a couple little tweaks of being able to drop right by them in the middle, you know. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. Looking forward to it. First night of a, of a pretty big swing here. So we're excited. How much of a chess game was it for you out there, especially running in second and third throughout that race, to see both what the cars in front of you were doing and what the lap traffic was doing? Yeah, it's uh, you know it's tough. You just kind of gotta. Actually, I had a probably a better view of it than anybody. I could kind of just go wherever they wasn't. And so uh, we got JD right there and, and kind of come to Hudson. It was a hell of a race. If I mean, if they didn't like that, something's wrong with them. So like I said, I just want to thank all my uh, my sponsors and my crew. And it's my mama's birthday today. I really wanted to win one for her. So I just want to wish her a happy birthday and say hey to all my family back home. And, and uh, like I said, we got a long stretch here. We're looking forward to it. We'll see him at Ponderosa tomorrow night. Brandon Overton finishes in the second position. We'll grab a word here with your third place finisher, Mike Parler. Mike, first thing I got to ask, we didn't see it. What happened with you and Ricky Thornton Jr. out there that uh, brought up the 460 uh, caution flag earlier in the race? Well, I, I had just got by him a couple of laps before then, and I was kind of using the diamond line down there. I, you know, he couldn't see that obviously with me behind him. So, so I passed him and cleared him. We we slid each other for a lap or two there and got all sorted out. And I I came out ahead of it and then uh, went went back to my diamond line, and he wasn't ready for that, I guess. So you know, it's probably probably as much my fault as his. I hate you know I know he's punch racing. So it was a bummer to see him get turned around there. And his right front just just kind of entered on my on my number more or less. And and. Uh, uh, you know, I was doing the little Lanigan line, and I ran over Lanigan one time doing that, so it's easy to run over somebody doing that. So, uh, so there's a lot of speed when you can do it, but uh, the guys behind you just got to be, you know, have a heads up when you change directions that fast. And, you know, I hate it for Ricky. Uh, he, he always races me awesome, you know, so that was probably just as much my fault as his. This third place finish continues a really strong run that you've had here as of late, and you're going into a couple tracks, Ponderosa and Florence, that you're pretty familiar with. It's got to feel good for you and, and this team heading into these uh, other two races this weekend. Yeah, it is. You know, I love going to Ponderosa and race there, you know, my whole life, really. So uh, hopefully, hopefully we can do good there in, in Florence. And, uh, you know, my little brother will be racing down there with us, and my dad's bringing the hobby stock, so it'll be a fun time tonight tomorrow, and I hope we do good. So, uh uh, yeah, just congratulations to Hudson there, man. He was really good. Brandon on second. That was a heck of a race. Uh, you could uh, you could see us all in the picture there quite a bit there toward the end of that one. So uh, it was fun, you know, and looking forward to going tomorrow and the next day. All right, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Marler rounds out the Big River Steel podium here this evening at Atomic Speedway. James, that's a wrap on the night the stars come out, man. We had a uh, just a phenomenal night of racing. A 30-lap uh, Tezos All-Star Circuit Champion Sprint Car feature was just phenomenal. And, of course, the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series, as always, did not disappoint, man. You've got a couple more races coming up this weekend at the Pond in Florence. Uh, I will not be able to attend those. My good friend and your good friend, Michael Spanky to Spain, he'll be pit reporting those races. 
Texas, brother. It was a pleasure working with you. I hope the fans watching back home on Flow Racing enjoyed it. I know the fans here in the grounds at Atomic got their money's worth. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see in the night the stars come out again here in 2024. Can you imagine what the crowds are going to be like tomorrow night at Ponderosa and Saturday night at Florence with the way the weather forecast has turned for the good? It's pretty doggone impressive. All right, thank you, Dustin. Appreciate it. Thank you to Blake Anderson, Georgia Hanaberry, as well with the All-Star Sprint. So, again, Hudson O'Neill, your winner tonight. Brandon Overton, Mike Marler, Kyle Larson, Jonathan Davenport, fifth. And it was Tyler Erb, Cameron Marler with his best career finish in Lucas Oil A Model Dirt Series. Max Blair, the Todd Steel Buildings Hard Charger, 22nd to 8th. Ninth, Josh Rice. Tenth was Tim McCready. So, Hudson O'Neill will sport the Midwest Sheep and Loin Sport tomorrow night. As we head to the pond, Ponderosa Speedway, Junction City, Kentucky, we invite everybody down for that for tomorrow night. And I know promoter.